Good evening, everyone. Phil here, and welcome to the Daily Wrap for what was Tuesday, the 2nd of April, 2024, a day when we posed a question. What are we going to do for the future? Because now it's April. We are out of RPG overload. I'm trying out new games. We're trying to figure out time slots, and right now, some stuff is working and some stuff isn't. And so we had a ginormous segment on today's Level 1 podcast this morning about it. And basically, here's the deal. Certain games are working very well. Alone in the Dark has done good the first two streams I've done of it. The game is great. People are enjoying it. Two thumbs up, right? But as for everything else, for example, bringing back Dragon's Dogma 2 into the mix hasn't been doing well. Attendance, engagement, and support have all kind of been low. And so I was talking with my audience about what do you think about that? How do you think Elden Ring will do, etc., etc. We had a really interesting conversation, and essentially this morning... People were on the fence about it. Some people are like, no, keep playing Dragon's Dogma 2, despite the fact that basically no one's showing up and supporting it. Others are like, well, you see, it's because you got rid of Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. And I'm like, but that game I played for over 20 hours, and it went to the point where I was getting 200 viewers a stream and no support either. No one cared about it, you know? Um, so I don't get it. It seems that what we have is a group of vocal people who say they want stuff, but then when I actually play it, they don't show up. Okay, I'm just being honest. Uh, it, it is kind of frustrating when I'm trying to listen to what my audience is telling me to do. Keep in mind, originally I wasn't even going to play Dragon's Dogma 2. I was going to play Rise of the Ronin, right? And I was outright told by my audience, don't do that. Play Dragon's Dogma 2. That's the better game. That's the one you're going to want to play. Anyway, so we had a big discussion about it this morning. And I asked everyone for feedback. I'm hoping that people will take that to heart and leave feedback on my podcast overnight. Um, on that because I'd like to really know what people think about it and what to do, okay? Then we had our streaming day, and the first stream today was Elden Ring. Returning to the game for the first time in a year after 39 hours of gameplay of this magic build last year, picking up where we left off. I'm happy to report it went really well. Number one, attendance was great. Number two, engagement was great. Number three, support was good. It wasn't, oh my God, blow me away, but it also wasn't atrociously bad. It was somewhere in the middle of where I'd like it to be, and that's fine. Um, as for gameplay, we got a lot done today. I wasn't expecting to do as much. You know, last time around, we had beaten the Lich Dragon, and that leaves you in a, in a situation where now you can decide what's the next piece of content to do. Do I want to continue with the main story? Do I want to do optional? And I said, you know what? We need to do optional because we want to finish up all the magic stuff to see optimally if any of it's going to go into to my build. Uh, Because this is a magic build, this glintstone magician that I have. So I said, here's what we need to do. We need to go do the other underground area, the Ansel River, the higher area. Not the lower area, which we already cleared, which has the dragon kin, but the higher up area with all these, uh, what do they call them? The tier, the tier enemies. They look at the little metal slimes. So go, go through there, clear that whole area out. We'll take the lift down. If you remember, that goes to the Lake of Rot. And then after that, there's the big Astol boss fight. Then you end up going to the upper continent to the upper plateau of Lyurnia that you could never reach when you were there earlier in the game. Um, and it's all magic-based stuff. There's the magic dragon. There's optional boss fights. There's dungeons. There's all kinds of stuff to do there. And I said, let's do that. So, I'm pleased to say it only took me about 30 minutes to get reacclimated to the game, to remember the controls, to remember how everything worked. Of course, I had help from the stream, and thank you to anyone who was there and helped me with that. Um... We jumped in head first, and I started doing really good, not really having too many issues. Did I die today? Oh, yeah. I died. I, I think uh, the rock killed me, Then I tried to fight. Oh, I, I actually did a few things today that I didn't do in my original playthrough from 2022. We fought the Dragonkin boss in the Rot Lake, and we actually you get a, a rare weapon for defeating him that I didn't even know existed in the game, and I got it. Um, at the same time, my goodness... The Glintstone sorceries are ridiculously OP. Like, we got to the the Blyde boss fight where he's, like, possessed. He's like a red invader. All I said was, big arrow, big arrow, and as he approached me, Comet. Done. He couldn't even move. He got stunlocked by the Comet spell. He, uh, done. So, pretty crazy. Um, The Astral boss fight was different and fun. Um... But anyway, we went, we got really far today, okay? Well, further than I thought. I thought maybe it would have taken me two streams to get as far as I did today. But we got far. The good news is there's lots more to come. We've still got the entire upper right-hand portion of the map that we have to clear out. Tons of stuff to do there. After that, we've got 
to do the underground dungeon to get to Moog's Blood Palace. We have to do the entire Moog dungeon and get to Moog and beat him. And then we can decide, do we want to actually finish the game? Do we want to do the Howling Tree and all of that? So there's lots more content coming. There's no way this will be done in like a, a day or two. This is a couple of weeks, I would say, of work. Uh, even with this OP build that I'm using. Anyway, it went good. I'm glad that I got back into it the way that I did. And I'm excited for more because I actually had a lot of fun with it. And I can't wait to play it again. So good stuff. Please enjoy the videos. They're live right now. And lots more coming in the next couple of weeks, if not the end of the month we'll see how long it takes to get in you know in line for the dlc um <clears throat> so all that was the first stream then tonight on the late stream i said i'm gonna go back to star wars battlefront classic collection and see if it works so here's here's in a nutshell the answer to that question okay does the game work yes is the game functional to the point where you can say that a single match is competitively sound absolutely not the game works, and it is better than it was at launch, but half the time, again, very hard for the hit detection to really register properly. Um, frequent freezes, stutters, teleporting, characters zooping all over the screen when they're not supposed to. But then it's funny, because then the game will work perfectly for a couple matches, and it's really, really fun. So it's kind of like, half the time, it works all the time, and the other half of the time, it doesn't work at all, and it's just like a frustrating mix. The other thing is, as we discovered, sadly, after playing over the course of the night, there's only, like, two servers anyone plays on on PlayStation 5. Seriously, like, there's only two to select from. There's a bunch of servers, but no one joins them. Everyone only joins the two servers, and so you have to play on one of those two or you're not going to get a match, and it sucks because the two servers, there was no aerial fights, there was almost no vehicle fights. It was mostly just... 32 versus 32 team-based stuff. There were a good amount of players. Don't get me wrong. Um, but that's it. I mean, no kidding. There's probably about 200 people playing this game at one time on PS5 now. That's it. 200 active players. That's it. At any given time. I can imagine it's probably way worse on Xbox. So I'm glad I didn't buy this thing on Xbox. But there's probably barely enough people to fill one lobby. So the thing is, <clears throat> when I was playing and it was working, I was having a ton of fun. It just was only doing that about half the time. But a good audience came out and wanted to hang out with me. And we had a very silly conversation tonight. We were joking about Will Smith and J-Lo as, as musicians. We were joking about all kinds of different various topics. I was making, you know, Wookiee cookie jokes and all kinds of stuff. And just having a good time with it. And I actually did some matches when the, the servers worked. I actually was getting kill streaks and stuff, which was fun. Um, and uh, we had a good time. Not only do we have great attendance... And great engagement the support was outstanding the support tonight for star wars battlefront collection which is a broken game that does not work was more than twice the support that i had gotten on the elden ring stream okay so if anything here's the deal alone in the dark doing good elden ring doing good a random battlefront stream does absolutely over the top outstanding okay why is it that the RPGs are underperforming? It's a very simple answer. Because there's too many fucking RPGs out at one time. The same exact thing that I said in January happened, has continued to happen, and is still happening now. It's not me, it's the fucking games. A game like the Battlefront Collection, we're just having fun, we're interacting, I'm being silly playing it, we can make jokes, we can have a good time. All of a sudden, people get invigorated. They want to support. A game like Elden Ring. It's exciting to see me jump back into an ultra-challenging game and see how I'm going to do and see how overpowered this Glintstone Magic run is. And a game like Alone in the Dark. People love my survival horror playthroughs because I put a lot of commentary into them. I get into the story. It's fun, right? RPGs are just RPGs. They're all going to be played similarly or the same, even if the play style of them is a little different. People are burnt out on them. They just are. Even if the games are good. Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, it's good. Dragon's Dogma 2, it's good. But people don't want it anymore. That's why the engagement and support dried up for them. You're like, dude, too many. I agree with you. You know, over the course of the last six months, we had Like a Dragon Gaiden, Like a Dragon Infinite Well, Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, Baldur's Gate 3, Endlessly. Now, we've got Dragon's Dogma 2. That's too many RPGs in a short period of time. They don't work. 
But if I had skipped them, people would have just given me hell. Remember, I was going to skip Dragon's Dogma 2 and people were giving me hell, telling me I was doing the wrong thing. Now I'm playing it and now all of a sudden the game is boring. Well, no shit. I knew it would be because people don't want the same kind of game over and over. Would have been the same thing if it was a bunch of Mario games or platformers, if it was a bunch of fighting games. You know what I mean? It's just, it's the same deal. <clears throat> so, in light of that, I think tomorrow we need to regroup and talk about what to do. Do we even continue with the RPGs right now or do we just say screw all of them? I mean, the schedule tomorrow is not going to change and I'll talk about that in a sec. But tonight was definitive evidence that it's not me because people came out, engaged, supported, and had a good time with a different kind of game and that's a good thing. Okay, <clears throat> so tomorrow we'll have a level one podcast discussing this. We'll try to figure out what to do moving forward. There's going to be Alone in the Dark on the first stream, which is going to be great. It's been a great playthrough so far, and now we're nearing the end of the game. People are basically saying probably two more streams to beat it. And then, yes, we're going to do Dragon's Dogma 2 on the late stream. I don't know how it's going to go. I'm going to be honest with you. If it's another dead stream, I'm done with the game at this point. Like I'm not going to play games that people don't want. I'm going to find games that people are going to find engaging that will urge them to have a good time and want to support. I'm not going to sit here and play an 80-hour RPG, the 10th that I've played already in the last year, just because that's the fucking kind of game that every game developer wants to make right now. I I'm getting done with it at this point, honestly. So... Let's see what happens. All right, everyone. I thank you so much. Please check out the Elden Ring. It was a pretty fun stream. Check out the silliness of the Battlefront stuff. That was fun too. I will see you all in the morning for a fun podcast where we will discuss this and then a good day of new games all day and we'll see how it goes. All right. Just one final reminder because maybe many of you don't check out the podcast. My birthday is uh, Saturday and I'm doing a birthday marathon all day long. It's going to include schedule update, food, uh, birthday cake, booze, a remin a uh, retro react segment where we're going to reminisce about the past and watch my most viewed videos of all time in a playlist which is going to be super fun to do that react event among other things i hope if you can make it this saturday if you could swing by and just hang out with me for five minutes or maybe just come by <clears throat> at any time during the day and hang out or maybe you could be there all day it would be great to see you you know i love doing these special events they're cool chill opportunities to just have a good time and being that it's my birthday it would be nice to hang out with people Maybe if, if I haven't even seen you in a while, it would be nice to at least see you come by and say hello. All right? Guys, thank you so much. Have a good night. See you tomorrow. Peace out.